All right, good morning, everyone. Again, most of you, but for those of you that I haven't seen yet today, top of the morning. <laughs> All right, um, so I uh, don't really have anything to return to you because I don't think I collected anything right before Labor Day. Where is that according to my notes? So, uh, let's go straight into, I know you guys are all counting at the bit for analyzing uh, number one on page 163. Uh, this is your first, I believe, uh, homework assignment where you have to analyze a piece of music that modulates from one key to another. Um, do you all have, do you all have page 163 open in front of you? What I'd like to do, since I think this is going to work, I'd like to play uh, the recording of this so that you can hear what you are analyzing, because is that not one of the first things that I gave you on that handout when I, it's asking you to mod, or analyze a modulating passage? You do want to listen carefully to the passage that you're analyzing. So now that I've built it up, let's hope that it, uh, it works. This is chapter 18, 18 2, let's see, day one. Yeah, that's good. Exercise 18-2, A-1. This is a nice piece. And last class we talked about once you find the signal, 
and it's part of the single chord, where do you look for the pivot chord then? The, pivot, the chord that smooths it out. The chord before, right? Okay. Now that is the chord that you will analyze in both keys. That chord should fit in the old key of B flat major, and it should also fit nice and naturally and neatly in the new key of F major. That's the vehicle again, the pivot or the link between the two keys, how the composer gets from one key to the next. Um, if you look past measure six, do you see E naturals persisting or continuing? Okay. I do, yes. In fact, do we have a cadence in F by the last measure of the example? Yeah. Those two things. The cadence in F confirms that we've gone, we've changed key to F, and the E natural, the fact that it persists beyond measure six, and that it's consistently being used until the cadence, those things tell us that we do have a change of key officially, rather than just a brief tonicization. That reminds me, how did I, what did we talk about last class on the F sharp in measure two? What type of chord is that going to be if it's got an accidental? You don't have to give me the Roman numeral. It's a secondary chord, right? And how would you analyze the chord on the second beat of measure three if it's got accidentals? Another secondary chord, right? Okay. Um, I did also want to make a point. I know some of you, I think I heard you talking about this before class. Beat three of measure seven. <laughs> Yeah, if you look closely at that, all you have are the notes C and A. Mm -hmm. um, maybe because you, you've heard it, um, do you know a chord that might make sense, even though there is a pitch, an important pitch missing in that chord? Yeah, there's an F missing in that chord. I would say it's an FAC with the C as the lowest note. FAC with C as the lowest note. And by the way, the, well, the, author, the author gave you some of the nine chord tones, but certainly not all of them. Who's the author? Oh, Stephen Costco or Dorothy Payne? <laughs> uh, so I had, to, I had to pick out a lot of nine chord tones in the soprano one, or the melody one, especially in measure six and seven. Especially in measure six and seven. Yes. Exercise 18-2, A1. fit in the new key of F. But I 
can also see that you include the E natural in the melody above this. Then you have E natural G B flat D. And that also produces a chord that fits diatonically in the Q that does it not? Right? E G B flat D. Stuff. Right. If you want to, if you want to call the E in the melody a non-chord tone, then you would just look at the notes in the left hand and analyze your chord that way. That's fine. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good. Other questions before I pick this up? I'm so excited for you guys. You know, I do first launch of all right, uh, make sure your name is on it then and I'll collect it. You know, I'm sure all the songs you sing in choir, they all modulate something. I'm sure they do. assignment sheet, we are talking about common chord modulation today, and we're talking about it on Friday's class too, just to let this sink in and to get some more practice analyzing um, of passages that modulate. But on Monday of next week, we're going to start reviewing the first half. I don't know why, but it seems like the tests in my oral skills and my theory classes tend to be very close to I don't know how your other classes work. Maybe some of you have classes where you don't get a test until the middle of the semester, like a midterm. I don't know. Um, or maybe you don't have tests in any. <laughs> I know you don't have tests in choir. Usually not. <laughs> All right, let's go. Um, uh, you said you have your workbook with you. What I would like you to do is turn to page 165. And I want to use an example of that page uh, to analyze another uh, modulating passage. So everyone needs to be on page 165. I want to look at number, is it the top one? Is that number five? OK, how about? Well, we can do number four. Do you want to do number, let's do number four. We didn't do this one in class last week. I don't have my book. Is it the one Oh, okay. Oh, let's see. Well, I would say if you could sit next to somebody. I don't know if that if you feel comfortable doing that with masks on. I don't. I can't. I can't show mine on the screen because it has all the mentions in it. <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to follow the step-by-step -step process that I gave you uh, for analyzing passages that modulate. Again, this is the all-important handout. If you follow these by step, uh, you, should be, you should be good to go. Um, first thing I want to do, though, is I would like to play this for you. And this is in the same chapter number four. Let's listen to this one. Exercise 18-2, A4. <laughs>
tell me the starting Yeah, F minor. Do you see that strong F in the bass? And it's a pedal tone. Boom, 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 Yeah, okay. So we start in F minor, which makes sense with the four flats. So it was A flat major. But we do start in minor. Now, look at the cadence at the very last measure. What key have we modulated to? A flat major. Yeah, now we've gone to A flat major. So, F minor to A flat major, what do you know about those two keys? Do they share the same key signature? Yes, therefore they are known as what? Not parallel, relative. Yeah, relative, and they're also closely related. Because all relative keys are closely related. Okay. So, we've listened to the passage. I think what we'll, let's, let's listen to it one more time, and this time, can you maybe let your ear choose and give me a ballpark measure as to where you think the, um, the, the key is shifted, or where do you think we're in the, we're in the new key? Oops. Oops. Exercise 18-2, A4. I know it's in both of the keys' key signatures, but 
because E flat means a lack of this key defining tone T in, in the old key, F minor. Because E flat means that we have a lack of that, that means when I start seeing E flats consistently, I am probably not in F minor any longer. Because when you lose T, your whole key starts crumbling. So when I don't have E natural anymore, when I start getting E flats consistently, that's going to be a signal. Now, you told me now we're on measure 25. Now I'll tell you that E flat in the melody, that very first note, that's just a non-chord tone. Don't, don't focus on that. Where is a first solid, clear E flat that you get to in the passage? Say again? Uh, now don't, again, don't count that really high one that just lasts for an eighth note. Can you see that? Look in the left hand a little bit further. Do you see measure 26? Yeah, the third measure of the second line. Do you see that chord there? It's got these notes. And the top note is an E flat. And doesn't that last for most, most of the bar? Yeah. That to me is a pretty strong signal. We got E flat lasting through most of the bar. We don't have E natural anymore. In fact, you should not see any E naturals measure 26 and onward. You should not see any E natural. So I'm going to say that that E flat in measure 26 in the left hand, that is my signal. It is technically the absence of an accidental that belonged to the old key. It's not E natural anymore. Plus, if I had, let's, okay, that's my signal, that's also my signal chord. Could somebody help me analyze the chord in measure 26 already in the new key of A flat? Just look at the left hand, that's all you need. Not for two, but yeah, it's a five six five in the new key. What is one of the choices about your signal chord on here? Isn't it a five or a five seven in the new key? So it satisfies signal letter two B on this handout and a, not two B no, on this chain. Letter two B and then two D. It's a, the absence of an accidental that belonged to the old key, and it's also a 5-7 in the new key, that whole chord. So that is by far, it's got to be my signal chord. And again, the signal chord is the first chord completely in the new key. So we should analyze that chord in A flat. Now, the all important question is, here's the pivot chord. Okay, let's go back a measure. we have this. But in measure 25, we have this. What chord is that? Look again mostly at the left hand notes. What notes do we have there? Okay, D flat, F, and A flat, right? We're saying that this is probably the pivot chord. Does D flat and A flat fit in the old key of like F? What Roman numeral would it be? Six. And technically, it's in what inversion? It's in first Six. inversion, isn't it? Okay. Now that's a kind of a rare chord, but that's also a tip off that hey, I'm not sure. Does D flat, F, A flat fit in the new key of A flat? Yes, as a what? How? Okay, and because this is in first inversion, it's the same chord as the music, this also has to be in first inversion. So that's how I would analyze the modulation. I would say the signal chord, which is in measure 26, we said is a 565 in A flat. That's this one. That's the signal chord. And the pivot chord is this one. 
we mentioned before, that smooths out the modulation. And I would write that into your workbook. I would. I, for, for measure 25, I would write 6-6 six, six above 4-6 and use the special symbol for uh, pivot core modulation. Remember, you've got to show the new key. So you've got to have at least the A flat there. You don't have to have the F, but at least show the A flat. And then in the next measure, I would have analyzed as a 5-6-5. Five, six, five. A 5-6-5 five, and A flat. Does anyone have any questions about that? Let's just play it one more time now that you've uh, identified it. See if now that you know exactly where the modulation, see how that uh, works with your ear. With what you're hearing. Exercise 18-2. A4. Okay. 
So in other words, the key signature is not changed when the new key takes effect. And so that means after the pivot port, after the pivot port, you need to be careful to add the accidentals to the ports that will require them in the new key. Um, yeah. So, I guess to illustrate this, I've got a, a half sheet handout that I want us to work on a little bit. We don't, we don't have to complete this handout, but I want us to get the idea of what we have to be aware of, what we have to look for. So, uh, in fact, uh, I guess if it wasn't the COVID-19 semester, I would get you guys into groups and work together on this. Uh, but for now, maybe you want to just shout across the aisle to me.
By the way, after you uh, after the pivot chord in C minor, you notice that we have fives and stuff we're going to need to be natural. You look at the rest of the Roman numerals. Is there another chord you can see that's going to require a physical B natural added in there? Which one? The five seven, yeah, right, the cadence. Yeah, that's going to require an actual, you write and write in a natural. Remember, the key signature stays true to the old key of G minor. talk about this B natural, right? And we know why that, that has to be there, because we've changed P to C minor. And B natural is T in C minor. So we need to be using but let me ask you this. In the following chord, after the 5, 4, 3, and the 1, 6, why do I have the base double? I thought we weren't supposed to double the base of the 1, 6. Does 
How many tendency cones does a pi equal to three have? Two. V natural is one of them, but the other is the F. And I have my F kind of couched there right next to the sopranos within the alto. You see how the F needs to come down by step? So we had talked about this probably at the very beginning of theory two. But when 543 goes to 16, you'll have to have a strange doubling in the 16 when it comes immediately after a 543 because you've got a result of 7 down. Okay? So that's why the F goes down and I have the base double and the B natural goes up. And because I have an E flat now in the alto at the end of measure 2, that makes it a lot easier for me to reach the D in the next measure that I took it to. Okay. Let me pose this question to you. Why on earth does this 2 half diminish 4, 3? Why do I have an accidental on the Because what? Because, yeah, because I'm in C minor. And you know, C minor's key signature has another flat besides D minor. So I also have to include A flats in my music if I ever write any A's. A flats, but B naturals. So there's two accidentals that I've got to be concerned about here. The A flat, because the C minor key signature is different and has an A flat, whereas D minor's key signature doesn't. And the B natural is to raise T in the minor key of C. So that's why I have an A flat in the base of that chord. And we talked about why I have, need to have a B natural, right, for the 5, 7. Now, I don't know about you, but um, when I grade your part rate, it seems to me that if there are any part rating errors, they tend to crop up right by the cadence. What, what, is, what, is, what does this mean here, that I put this arrow, the B natural and the tenor going down to the G? Can I do that? Yes. Yeah, what's that called? It's an error. Yeah, frustrating, right? So that I can end up with a complete tonic chord. But do you see, well, I guess I already took the, never mind, I took the seventh down for you, but that's in the soprano that goes down by step. Yeah. Careful not to make silly mistakes in the part writing in the last two chords by the cadence. That's where I tend to see a lot of part writing errors. Now, I'm going to freeze this on the screen so we can play it. So we can hear how this shifts from G minor to C minor. That's a nice strong beat. Down what I have, that's perfectly fine. 
because your uh, assignment for Friday is going to be a half sheet very similar to this, where you part write a short passage that modulates. Except instead of giving you the Roman numerals, I give you figured dates. Then you determine the chord, and you put the Roman numerals in. And you need to show the modulation with the pivot symbol. And at the pivot chord, I remind you of the instruction, make sure you show the new key. Do I sound like a broken record? Mm -hmm. Make sense? OK. Then let me get you that assign half sheet assignment. This is for Friday. Here it is. Don't lose it. It's a lot smaller. <laughs> So complete this from Friday's class. Thank <laughs> you. 